Hey everyone, I'm Deshella with Edmunds and this is the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Three rows of luxury with just enough off-road toughness to give you that little dirt crud you're looking for in the school drop-off line. This thing is full of style and it's unapologetically American in dimensions, but it's also $60,000, so yeah. But hey look, don't fret because there's a lot of options out there that can fit the bill and we've got two of them here today. We've got this Ford Explorer and the previous generation Jeep Grand Cherokee. So we're gonna let you know every little thing that you wanna know about them and why you should consider them if you're looking for an all-American SUV that doesn't break the bank. At Edmunds, we painstakingly test and review hundreds of cars each year, while CarMax experts appraise, buy, and sell thousands. So we're combining our testing knowledge with CarMax's experience to help you make the right choice. But before we get to that, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to CarMax's channel. Plus, there's a lot of information that we're not gonna be able to get to in this video, so click the link below for an in-depth article. All right, so let's get the obvious out of the way here. One of these has two rows of seats and the other one has three. So you're probably like, why are we talking about them? Well, the two-row Grand Cherokee provides space and toughness that many SUVs its size don't, while the Explorer has quick handling for something this large. So in short, they're both kind of a middle ground and shoppers actually compare them against one another quite often. This version of the Grand Cherokee debuted in 2011 and the model we have here is a 2018. These babies are all about toughness, whether you're towing or off-roading, but inside there's a comfortable interior that really classes it up. On average, CarMax sells Grand Cherokees for about $34,000. Next up is our three-row Explorer. Now this is a 2020 model, which was the debut year for this generation of the iconic SUV. The big news here is that the Explorer has returned to a rear-wheel drive layout with available all-wheel drive that improves the driving experience in a huge way. It's also a tough SUV with a lot of tech features inside. CarMax sells the 2020 Explorer for an average of around $43,000. All right, so inside the Grand Cherokee, you can see why they insist on adding the word grand to it. Like, it just feels good in here. It really does. It has some of the most plush interiors in its class. The dash is soft to touch. The steering wheel is nice, soft leather. Center console, same thing, nice and soft. And then there's a lot of like metal accents all around. And the cup holders, the center stack, the dials, kind of everywhere. Even getting in is a high point in this car. Certain models do have air suspension, so when you get in the car, it can lower itself down to make it easier for you to hop on in and drive into the sunset or whatever you're gonna do. And we also really like these seats too because the seats, they're, they're nice and plush, but they're also firm, which is kind of a hard thing to do, but I think they pulled it off pretty well. So on the limited trim and above, you also get heated steering wheel. I love heated steering wheels. It's a nice touch and you also get heated front seats and rear seats. I mean, it's not every day that you get an SUV that has heated rear seats and believe me, it is a nice touch. It really is. And speaking of the rear, the rear seats recline. It feels comfortable, it feels good. And honestly, there'll be no fighting over the front seat anymore. We don't want shotgun, we want to sit in the back. So if you plan on doing things like road trips or anything like that, the back is where you want to be. Now, does the Ford Explorer offer more space in comparison? I mean, yeah, there are three rows instead of two after all. But beyond that, there isn't really a whole lot of benefit to the Explorer over the Grand Cherokee from an interior perspective. You do have pretty good space up front, nice outward visibility, and seats with a lot of adjustability. But in the back, our testers think that it's kind of a tight fit. But I don't really think it's that big of a deal, at least in the second row. But when it comes to that third row, it's a whole different story. I mean, I'm six feet tall and I wouldn't want to be back there for long, like ever. But if you're a little kid, it may be okay. Unfortunately, the disappointed theme continues when we talk about materials. When I tell you there's a lot of plastic, there is a lot of plastic. I mean, this is an Explorer XLT model, which is just above the base model. So yes, you can expect to see some lower quality trim here and there, but honestly, it doesn't get much better in the higher trim levels either. And the Explorer was priced above its competition when new. So with all that in mind, it's just kind of hard for me to justify all of this plastic, the dash trim, the controls in the center stack, really all of it. But I mean, look, if that doesn't bother you, so be it. But we just expect a little more attention when it comes to detail. So you've got your Grand Cherokee and you're feeling comfortable inside. Now, how do you actually use the touchscreen? 
This 8.4 inch screen, it's a good size. And what's even better is that it uses the Uconnect system that we've seen in a lot of other cars. And we tend to like it. It works really well. It's very responsive. It's kind of straightforward. It's like everything you need, just it, it says it. So that's one thing that's great. Now on this model that we have here, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto do come standard. And my favorite part about this is the sound system. Let me tell you something. This sound system is banging. Like it's, it's really good. If you're a sound person like I am, you won't be disappointed. And the best part about it is this isn't even an upgraded system. This is not the upgraded speaker system or anything. It's just the standard one. So you'll like it. So what about driver aids? Well, for the 2018 model, you'll need to find them in optional packages or higher trims like the Summit to get things like blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, and forward collision mitigation. Now, most Jeeps and other family brands, we found that these systems work really well in our Edmunds testing. But for whatever reason, in the Grand Cherokee, they do seem a little sensitive, but I'd rather have it be too sensitive than not sensitive enough. Now let's move on to the Explorer. Standard on all models is an eight inch touchscreen like this one. Now there is an available 10 inch unit, but it's not standard on any trim. So you'll find this eight incher on the vast majority. And we really prefer it. These systems run on Ford's Sync 3 infotainment system, which is sharp and snappy. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard. Now one advantage that the Explorer has over the Grand Cherokee is that it comes standard with a larger set of driver aids, such as automatic emergency braking, lane keep assistance, and blind spot monitoring. That's a pretty good deal if you ask me. And in our Edmunds testing, they've worked quite well. In an SUV this size, that's a big help to make sure you're staring clear of any obstacles and other vehicles on the road. So thumbs up to you, Ford. Okay, so now that we've got the interiors down, let's take them on the road and see how they stack up. So when it comes to the Grand Cherokee, what do you get under the hood? I know that's what you guys are all wondering. So in this one that I'm driving right now, it has a 3.6 liter V6 that's called the Pentastar. Now, if that one sounds familiar, it's actually because a lot of cars use this exact engine. So, you know, cars like the Dodge Challenger, the Ram 1500, and the Jeep Wrangler. Now, there are some other options, of course. There's a diesel powered V6, and then there are also three V8 options. Yes, three. So they were thinking about uh, power when they made this car. But overall, the majority of them will have this engine because it's, it's a good engine. It gives enough power while also allowing there to be pretty good fuel economy, you know, for as big of an SUV that it is. It's, it's big. Now, with all of that said, this is a Jeep, all right? And the Grand Cherokee is heavy, and that affects the way it drives. So it does kind of feel like a brick on wheels at times. I'm not going to lie. It does. It doesn't have the best handling, and it doesn't necessarily respond as fast as it should. So the steering is not necessarily the fastest. Uh, you know, sometimes it's kind of like, it feels like the steering wheel and the wheels aren't in sync. And when they made the Grand Cherokee, they had off-roading in mind, like many of their cars. So if you're driving on the dirt, you're gonna love it, okay? But you will feel the difference when you're on the road. But hey, surprisingly, the brakes are very responsive and they brake really well. All right, so now that we have the Grand Cherokee down, let's check out the Explorer. All right, so now we're driving in the Explorer. And let me tell you, this one is all about the driver. That's actually why they switched back to a rear wheel drive platform for this latest generation. Now, the one I'm driving right now has a turbocharged 2.3 liter four cylinder. And when I tell you it moves, it moves. Uh, believe it or not, it is a four cylinder, but it does what needs to be done. There are some other engine options available. There's a turbocharged six cylinder, and then there's also a hybrid model, but yes, Believe it or not, a four cylinder is hauling this three row family SUV down the road. And believe me when I tell you, there's no problem. It has a whole lot of power, 300 horsepower and 310 pounds feet of torque. Keep in mind, that is more than the Jeep Grand Cherokee has and the Jeep is a six cylinder. So Jeep, I'm sorry, but Ford said they're coming for you. You gotta step your game up. This one also has a 10 speed transmission that we actually really like. It does a really good job at choosing which gear you need to be in when you need to be in it. Now at low speeds, it can get a little clunky, but overall, we really like it. And the turns is where you really see the advantage of the Explorer. This is a well-balanced SUV, so it handles corners much better than you'd think. I mean, think of it like a ballerina, but with three rows of seats. 
Okay, look, you get what I was trying to say. I know that sounds weird, but you get the point. But the real question is, how aggressive do you really plan on driving in your family SUV? Something tells me that you're not gonna be doing that much aggressive driving. But if you need it, it's got the power. All right, let's see what it can do. Oh, 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 okay. Is this a four cylinder or what? This does not feel like a four cylinder. I'm not gonna lie, this does not. <laughs> okay, I like that, I like that. So if you're living with the Grand Cherokee day to day, what can you expect? Well, you know, one of the biggest downsides about this car is actually the cargo space. When you open the hatch, you get 36.3 cubic feet of space. And yeah, I know that may sound like a lot, but it's actually a lot smaller than other SUVs in its class. I mean, think about this. It's even smaller than the compact CRV. Now, G, come on now. Like, you can't play us with the cargo space. So what really just irks me about the Grand Cherokee are the headlights. I mean, think about this. This is a limited, and it still does not come with HID or LED headlights, and it really just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm a light guy, and I feel like no car made in the past five years should ever have yellow lights. Please, stop with the yellow lights. But on the plus side, the Grand Cherokee is well equipped for towing. It can pull up to 3,500 pounds when properly equipped, and the V8 models are rated up to 7,200 pounds of capacity. Now that's a lot of camping gear. So what about fuel economy? Everybody's favorite thing to talk about when shopping for SUVs. Well, this V6 gets an EPA estimated 21 miles per gallon combined, whether you have a two-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive model. And you know, that's much better than the V8 models, which actually only get 17 miles per gallon combined. And you know, that's not really, we don't want that. Now, if you get a diesel model, that gets better gas mileage, but those are really hard to find, so we recommend you sticking with the V6 to get all the fuel efficiency that you're looking for. As for the Explorer, behind the third row, you're gonna get 18.2 cubic feet of space. And yeah, I know, like, that's not a lot, but being that there's three rows of seats, it's not terrible. But honestly, the real magic happens when that third row goes down. When the third row goes down, you get 47.9 cubic feet of space, which is a whole lot of space and much more than the Grand Cherokee. The Explorer is also great at towing. With a max capacity of 5,300 pounds with this little four-cylinder engine when it's properly equipped. And some trims still go higher. But two cool things I really like that stand out, the Explorer gets a tow mode button to help the engine handle the load behind you. And what's even better about it is your blind spot monitoring system extends all the way back to your trailer if you're pulling one. I don't know about you, but that's pretty cool if you ask me. So, what's the gas mileage on this one? Well, with this engine, you get an EPA estimated 24 miles per gallon, and if you decide to go with an all-wheel drive, it jumps down to 23. Both of those figures are still better than the Grand Cherokees, and this is a bigger SUV. So towing and fuel economy, two things that give the Explorer a couple of extra points. So at the end of the day, this matchup comes down to one thing. How much space do you think you actually need? We already know that the Grand Cherokee doesn't offer as much room as other SUVs in its class. Meanwhile, the Ford Explorer has a large advantage over its rivals. And those rivals usually have a good amount of cargo space. So that right there can make your decision easy. But if you're still confused and you don't really know what you want to do, there's a lot about the Grand Cherokee that we really like. I mean, it has a lot of tried and true components that we know work really well in a really cool looking package. And that interior, come on, we can't forget about the interior. It's definitely a step up for its class. And quite frankly, it feels much nicer in the Grand Cherokee than it does in the Explorer. And if you're somebody who likes to off-road or do things like that, the Jeep's your guy, because come on, it's a Jeep, it's made for that. Let us know which SUV you'd pick in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe to CarMax's YouTube channel. And for an in-depth article on either one of these vehicles, click on the link in the description below.